Hey, welcome back to Duckman Cycles and VW Garage. I'm your host, the Duckman. <laughs> We're back today on my 1956 Beetle, also known as Eleanor. She's right here behind me. But down below, we've got the chassis, which we've been working on. Well, specifically the engine. You remember, that's where we left off last week. And uh, last week, it was before uh, almost a whole week's worth of rain. And as you can see, looking around here, everything is still wet. This is the first day that we've had no rain yet. And uh, things are starting to dry off finally. My driveway is actually slippery. When I took the uh, body out here and was walking, it's actually slick. And I looked at it closely, there's actually algae forming on the driveway because it's been so so warm and so wet for the last week with these this practically non-stop raining that uh, everything just got a green green coating on it. You can see it here on my pavement, all green. You now my little metal work here is, is green. The side of the house is turning green. Anywhere that uh, it got wet is green. It's just everything is just so so wet. The whole side of the house here is green. Ah, the fence is green. I mean, just everything out here is green. Until we get some sunlight, that's not going to go away. Yeah, what I thought was um, pollen on the Z actually turned more green. So well, that's also algae from it just being so damn rainy. Anyways, there's Eleanor. She's my 1956 Beetle. You know the story. Hurricane damage, rebuilt her. She's now officially a chop top. But uh, I've been working on putting the engine together, and last week while I did that, my torque wrench broke. This sucker right here. I went and I returned it, and I talked to a really, really cute cashier that's in there, and she did the exchange work for me. I went and I recalibrated it, had my scale set up here, I put it in the vise, and I set it to 18 foot-pounds and pulled it, and it was dead nuts on. But just for shits and grins, I decided to put it at 40 foot-pounds and tested it. And it got to about 48 and a half before it would click off. So as I got further up the scale, it's not accurate. And that's probably good to know. I'll probably have to recalibrate it down the road. But I would say it's uh, <laughs> it's not going to be linear. But yeah, at the 18 foot-pounds that I need this to set to, it is going to be correct. So I can get these head bolts tightened up on this engine. And I probably don't need to do that. But it's good practice whenever you get an engine from somebody else. And if everything's this far apart, it's a good idea to do it now. Because once you got everything together, it's a real pain in the ass to get to those bolts a second time later. So uh, we're going to go ahead and get those things torqued down. I got my GoPro set up over there, so we're going to get some action shots. And uh, we're going to see how far we can get this thing assembled today before it either, uh, you know, gets dark or before I get tired. Anyways, that's it for now. Thanks so much. What the hell is going on here with this camera? It's me! There we go. Thanks so much for watching, you guys. I really do appreciate it. Happy New Year's! I forgot to say, today is actually New Year's Day. And uh, it's the first day, as I said, without rain since the day after Christmas. So it's just been absolutely disgusting. And that's one of the reasons for my shortage of videos. It's just, I can't get anything out of the garage when it's pouring. Yeah, yeah, I know. You guys tell me, you need a bigger shop. Yeah, you should! You should! You know how I am about the you should. I'm not the only one that mentions that, by the way. I've been watching AVE lately, and he's also telling about it, about uh, <laughs> how the people that watch him tell him how he's supposed to work in his shop. Well, you know what? It, it, <laughs> nothing, and I don't want to hear it either. So thanks so much for watching, you guys. I really do appreciate it. I'm glad that you're here. If you do have a constructive criticism, though, and you actually can tell me something that I have done wrong or something that I can do better, you know, I'm always open to suggestions. A lot of what I learned is from either reading books or hands-on combination with books. Nobody really taught me. I never went to school for it. So I do the best that I can with what I got, and uh, I'd say that body really reflects what I can do by myself without anybody teaching me. So thanks again for watching, guys. Really do appreciate it. Like, comment, subscribe. Pluck a little dingle belly you see next to the subscribe button. Don't forget to check out Duckman Cycles VW Garage up on the Facebook group page. And check out my other channel, VV the Duck VV. I do my daily, well, roughly daily. I actually should have done more while I was in in the rain. I could have recorded some Q&A videos inside. But actually, I did some editing instead and got some uh, tech session videos uploaded. And uh, there's going to be another tech session this Saturday, by the way. Uh, I'll put some links down below. So you guys can figure out how to get to the uh, Rare Air Volkswagen Club website and you can see our scheduled date for our next tech session, which happens to be the first Saturday of the year. Not just the month, but the year. It'll be our January tech session. I think the weather's actually supposed to be a little cool. But anyway, we're working on Volkswagens. It's a free invite to you. And if you make it on out, hey, you get free pizza. So thanks a lot and uh, I hope you join us. We'll be back in just a few with a little more work on this engine. Appreciate it. Thanks for watching.
Okay, now these head bolts that are on here, they have to be torqued down in a specific pattern. And the pattern typically is just like this. This is the initial pattern. You would start with bolt number one, bolt number two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And you would start at seven foot-pounds. Now, I'd say it's pretty safe to assume at this point that these bolts are probably tighter than seven foot-pounds, but we're gonna check that. And uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump down to the second torque sequence, which is uh, 18 foot-pounds for eight millimeter head bolts, or roughly 22, 23 foot-pounds for 10 millimeter head bolts. And in my case, I actually got the eights on here, so I'm gonna go with the lower specification. And this is the second torque pattern, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So I'll be using this crisscross pattern here and moving them up to 18 foot pounds. Now, people do often talk about head studs, and that seems to be a lot of um <laughs> a lot of debate as to which is better, eight millimeter or ten millimeter, you know, blah blah blah. Being as a stock engine, eight millimeters is just fine. Even for most high performance applications, you can get away with eight millimeters. There are some exceptions to that if you start running something high compression, or if you start running some really high displacement engines, you're probably gonna want to use some bigger head studs. But the reason why the smaller ones are better is because they actually they stretch. And as this engine heats up, those studs do need to stretch somewhat. And if they don't stretch, they break. And that's one of the reasons why the 10 millimeters is not always recommended, because they're just, well, they're too strong. Anyways, there's a lot more debate on that. I'm not going to get into it too much. I know that you guys are going to talk about it down in the comments section. But without me talking too much about this, let's go ahead and get started on this thing. Okay, got that torque wrench, and I got a 15, 15 millimeter socket, I believe it was. I can't remember last week. I think I said 17. And uh, it's actually a 15. Yep, 15-er. Here it is. Go right on there. We're going to start with the ones actually down below first. It's going to be this one. You get that torque wrench, and we're going to get set up here with the GoPro. Okay, not sure if you could see the markings too well on here, but this is set in foot-pounds. And you can see the little 15 that's right there at the tip of my thumbnail. And then I got it pointed to the 3, so 15 plus 3 equals 18. And of course you want to wind that past the 15, so that way the 3 is just a little bit past that. If we go to the 0, of course, then it's going to be a 20, because it'll roll over at that point. This is threaded, and this will, of course, move along the scale as you tighten the handle. Alright, let's go ahead and get started. Alright, first one's first. It's going to be this bolt right here. This is our number 1, and I'm doing this one-handedly. And I hate doing that. But that's just how it's going to be. And here we go. And push. That one's already down. Okay. Going to jump to number two, which is up here. I'm rather surprised these are all torqued down this properly. But as I was told is that this engine was fairly recently rebuilt. Well, not so much recently as far as time is concerned, but as far as miles are concerned. Yeah, this engine... Uh, there it is. None of them needed to be tightened at all. And based on the color of the oil and the uh, internals and how everything looks, this engine is, is in really, really excellent shape. Okay, let's see what we got on the other side. I'm going to move this over here. That way I can look at my little cheat sheet. This um, cheat sheet paper is actually like, like a really thin piece of leather today because of the humidity. The paper is actually catching all the, the dampness. Disgusting out here. Alright, first one. Here we go. Nope, that one's good. Next one. It's also good. Okay. Next one is here. Also good. Good. Always outside. Okay, and the last one. Everything was torqued properly. It looks like I didn't even need to take those rockers off at all to do that. Okay, well I'm quite happy knowing, peace of mind, that all of the head bolts are torqued down properly. I'm also going to go and check the case bolts just because. Uh, I'm going to say at this point I'm, they're probably fine, but I'm going to go and check them anyway. Now there's two different torque specifications on it because there are two different size bolts. I believe there's 6 millimeters and 8 millimeter ones. And I believe the 8 millimeter ones are 18 and yeah. I've actually got a cheat sheet for that. I think I've got it up here on my screen, as a matter of fact. Crankcase nuts, there they are. Eight millimeters and 12s. Eight millimeter ones are 15 foot pounds, and the 12 millimeter ones are 25 foot pounds. I don't remember them being quite 12 millimeter. I thought they'd be smaller than that. Interesting. Okay, well there it is right there. You're reading it. Boom. Okay, well, we're going to keep chugging away at this thing. i got to put the rockers back on. Rocker reassembly is uh, rather simple. What you've got to do is you got to grab your rocker assembly, 
put it on the studs. And then you make sure that the push rods that you see it bouncing there goes into the little cup. Those are gunshots I'm hearing. People are still popping fireworks and shooting guns whenever they want. You know, welcome to Pensacola. And little push rods have to go into the cups on the rockers. I like to tip everything back like that so that way it goes in there. And then when you push this on, the spring tension will hold everything in place. And it looks like I missed one of the rockers there. But I think you guys get to drift on that one. Okay, I'm going to need both hands to do that. But we'll be back in just a minute as soon as you make some progress. Okay, we got our rocker assembly in there. We got all of our push rods correctly pushed in there. The next thing we need to do is we need to tighten down the rocker bolts, which are right here and here. Also set to 18 foot-pounds. I've also done the same thing on this side. So that side is all pre-assembled also, ready to be torqued down. So we're going to be jumping on that next. Real simply put, you put your torque wrench on here. In this case, it looks like i got to snug the nut up a little more. Anyways, you guys get the drift on that. Alright, well what you guys didn't see, or you probably did in the time lapse anyway, is that uh, after I got the, um, the rockers bolted in there, I went to um, start setting the uh, lash on it. I was getting ready to drop back in and start recording a video. But when I looked down inside the intake ports where the paper was that I wadded in there, I noticed there was just a, a lot of sand. Just sand and just dirt and crap. And from sitting underneath that, that bench, seeing how this engine was just covered in like a layer of just sand dropped on it, you know, that was highly concerning. So um, I started to pull some of the paper out, and I discovered that some of the sand actually found its way down into the intake port. The good news is the engine has not been running. So the only paper, or I should say, the only sand that may have gone in was into cylinder number three, because that was the only valve that was open. So what I did was I popped the spark plug out, so I stuck my compressor nozzle down the side of it and sprayed it with air, and then all that sand and crap flew out of the intake port. So that was good. All the other ones didn't get any sand in them at all. Um, I then went ahead and sprayed some lubricant down inside the cylinders, and I turned it over, and it sounds good. It sounds good. And then it started to spit oil all over the floor, and I discovered the oil light switch was not installed. <laughs> I do remember having a project I needed to work on, so I ended up taking that out for it and never put it back. So I took one out of a spare engine real quickly because I knew that's where I could find one and uh, put that back together also. So now I've got the engine cranking over. It's now got oil pumping through the system. And uh, mind you, I've been cranking it by hand. I just put a ratchet on the pulley over here. Oh, that was another thing, the damn pulley nut. I couldn't find it. I know I have a jar of them somewhere here in the garage. And usually I keep my miscellaneous Volkswagen nuts and bolts right here. And, um, it just it was nowhere to be found. So I went out in the yard and I took one off of a dead engine, came in here and bolted it up and, and got the engine turned over. Then I went into the toolbox for something else and boom, I found the pulley nut that I meant to put on here. It was brand new. I didn't even know it was in the toolbox. 
But, you know, of course, now this one's already on there, so I really don't need it at this second. Since that one's all chewed up, I am eventually going to replace it. It's just not going to happen yet. So we got all the spark plugs pulled out of here. Um, everything is laid out the way it's... Uh, they're supposed to be. Now, by the way, I put that valve cover back on when I blew the sand out of there because I didn't want it getting into the, uh, the rockers. This side I also had covered, but I took it back apart because I was about to start checking the valve lash over here. Um, I think I'm going to take a break for a minute because there's so many little frustrating things came up. It just really pissed me off for the last hour and a half while I was trying to record this video. It's just like everything went wrong. And it's just, you know, it's rather typical of the beast. It's just what's going to happen. Murphy's Law, right? <laughs> All right, well, I gotta adjust the valve lash next. Um, once I got the valve lash ready to go, I'm gonna bolt the valve, well, clip the valve covers back into place. Set the timing on the engine. And just dribble a little bit of gas down in the intake ports, hook spark plug wires up, and crank it over and see if she fires. Without even putting an exhaust on there, worrying about carburetors or any of that other horse shit, let's just see if it fires and what it's gonna sound like. If that sounds good and doesn't make any obnoxious sounds or noises, I think we're going to go ahead and uh, bolt the carburetors and exhaust on and uh, run it, run it. For real. Check that out. weather is just fogging up my lens something fierce here okay I managed to get it dry but you can see it's all wet on the inside of my lens cap even disgusting with the cap on it was still getting wet anyways um you probably saw me in the time lapse I hooked up the battery to the starter and I got that engine turning over turning over when I crank it by hand now it turns over like butter I mean smooth as silk and the engine sounds good there's no weird knocking when I pull on that pulley back and forth, it just has that little bit of play that you can feel, but you can't see. So without actually a proper measurement, I can't tell you what it is, but that's probably within that ballpark of where it should be. So I think we're going to be good in that department. This uh, foundation in here, the floor of the garage, is um, actually wet. And the reason why it's wet is because uh, the humidity is coming up even higher yet. So high, in fact, that it's 70 degrees out and there's a fog falling upon us. But the pavement is much cooler than that because we had last night's cool air here in the garage. And what happens is that moisture will condensate or condense all over everything and make this a, just a, a f***ing wet mess. And I'm not excited about that. I hate that because this will start turning into puddles before you know it. So I'm probably going to start wrapping up here soon. Uh, the last thing that I want to do is I want to set the valve lash on this engine, put the covers on it, and then we're going to put it away. Uh, today is just, even though it's not raining, this is just a terrible day to do this kind of work. I just can't believe the fog just came out of nowhere. I mean, just 10 minutes ago, we didn't have that. And it's about 70 degrees out. You know, I've never seen anywhere else that you get to that temperature and you still get a fog. Absolutely disgusting. Air is just so wet. Awful. And this happens here in the wintertime. This is a typical Pensacola weather. All right. There's Eleanor. <laughs> All right, Eleanor, we're going to try to get your engine together. All right, a couple things you need for adjusting your valves, and probably one of the most important things is you need a feeler gauge. This feeler gauge set is absolutely disgusting, and a lot of the uh, gauges in it are starting to rust together. My 006, though, is actually still, still okay. It's still smooth, even though it looks really tarnished. It's actually still smooth, but it's uh, a .006 or six one thousandths, and that's what we're going to set the valve gauge to. Now, there's a little bit of debate about it, because Volkswagen used to have it at 004, but no, 006 is the correct setting, and uh, that's what they did in later years after 7172, when they realized they need a slightly wider valve gap. Anyways, what we're going to do down here is got to set the valve lash right here at the valve cap screws. That's these guys right here. Now you're going to want a flathead screwdriver that has a good handle on it because you're going to want to really be able to get a good grip on it. Then these nuts that you see here are typically 13 millimeter. So make sure you have a 13 millimeter wrench. Now they could be 12s, and I discovered that my 13 is extremely sloppy on there. It'll probably work, but it doesn't feel right. So I grabbed the 12 and put it on there, and it's entirely too small. So I decided to split the difference with a half inch and a half inch fits on there perfectly. So, I don't know what kind of funny business was going on in here as far as these are concerned, but these are 
half inch nuts. So some kind of crazy shit was going on in there, but that wasn't my doing. Okay, we want to come back around to the pulley, and we're going to want to find top dead center. Okay, right here on the front of this pulley, you can see the little markings that I make with a Sharpie. One is a B, one is a T. The B is for bottom dead center, the T is for top dead center. We want to line up top dead center with cylinder number one. Cylinder number one is on this side, the one that's furthest away from me right now. This is two, this is four, and that's three. So it's one, two, three, four, if that helps you guys. I'll number them here on the screen for you. Anyways, um, I'm going to have to turn this over until the T is aligned with the split here in the case and we want both of those rockers to be as far out as they're possibly going to go which is what top dead center is that's when you're going to essentially have your spark sparking and it'll be the beginning of your power stroke boy that fog out there is getting thick anyway <laughs> I gotta stay on topic here so I've got this uh, ratchet here it allows me to turn it over I'll bring it up to top dead center, and actually I think that was it. I went past it a little bit, but we can wind it back. And I went backwards too far that time. Okay, we are at top dead center. Now, of course, I didn't quite get it right. Man, this thing turns over nice and smooth with all that oil in that system. All right, we are currently at top dead center. Now we need to go over there to those rockers, and we need to get out our feeler gauge. So we're gonna go with a 006 because this is a later dual port engine. Let's go ahead and hop over to that side and we'll demonstrate as to how this works. On the top of these rockers, there's some nuts and some screws. You wanna make sure you get a flathead screwdriver with a really good handle on it. Ordinarily, I wouldn't tell you to use an imperial tool on metric uh, fasteners, but this is an exception. I don't know what the hell's gone on here with these. I don't know if they were manufactured out of tolerance or somebody actually put half inches in here but yeah that's wrong and they're all that way yeah they're half inch on every single one of these so something's definitely a little funny there but we're just gonna ride the wave because that's the way I found it and if that's what's gonna fit then that's just the way we're gonna do it it just means that in my toolkit for this car I'm gonna have to always keep a half inch wrench <laughs> in case you need to adjust the valve somewhere when you're out and about okay using the thumb of one hand you push down on the bottom of the rocker and you take your feeler and you try to put it between the valve and the rocker in this case it's it almost fits not quite so I'm gonna have to open that up just a little bit and this one this one well that one does fit that one does fit so it's gonna need a little bit of a minor valve tweaking here to those two so method goes like this loosen watch your knuckles because as you start to turn this you will bust your knuckles wide the hell open on those neighboring rockers this is where you wish you had three hands I hate doing this just for that reason if you have an opportunity to upgrade your engine to hydraulic um, lifters do it <laughs> it's been a while since I've done this so I'm a little rusty all right right there slide your wrench down Tighten that sucker right up. And hold that screwdriver in place while you tighten that nut. Because if you don't, the screw will turn and your valve lash will be messed up. Okay. Now let's go ahead and check. And that's how you want it. So that way that feeler gauge has a slight drag on it when you press it in there. You don't want it to be binding, you don't want to have to force it, and you don't want it to be sloppy like a loose old pussy. You just want it to be just dragging just a little bit. So that one is exactly the way it needs to be. Now we're going to jump over to the next one and do the same thing. Then we're going to show you what happens next. Okay, we finished setting up the valves on cylinder number one. Now we need to do number two next. Number two is in the reverse firing order. Essentially, we're gonna be starting with number one, therefore, two would be the next one in the chain going in reverse. So we wanna put our ratchet on here and turn that engine backwards, up to the left, and bring it around to bottom dead center. There it is at the top, okay? What bottom dead center is in relation to the top dead center we were just on is actually top dead center for cylinder number two right over here. So we're going to come back and we're going to adjust those valves the same way. Okay, we've got cylinder number two ready to rock and roll. Now we need to turn this backwards 
one more time the top dead center and what that will be if I didn't turn it too far like I just did once again this will be cylinder number three cylinder number three and the one that's furthest from me over here on the left side this guy so we're gonna adjust those two now just for shits and grins earlier I pulled out my feeler gauge and I put a 004 I slipped it right in. So apparently, um, whoever built this engine actually set it up for the older spec at 004, and it would probably be just fine with that, but since I already adjusted one cylinder, I'm gonna make them all match at 006. Properly adjusted over here in this corner. Now we need to finally do cylinder number four, which means we gotta come back around to the pulley, and we gotta turn this back around. Where the hell I put my ratchet? back to bottom dead center in the reverse direction bring that back up to B here it is and now we're ready to do the valves on cylinder number four repeat process and then we're good to go alright that finishes up our valve adjustments as I said when you get the right setting on it, you'll be able to slide that feeler gauge in, which is a slight resistance you'll feel on it. So those are good to go. Okay, we're ready to put our rocker covers back on, but before we do that, we got to prep the things. These rocker covers, these things are a, a little bit messed up. They actually have, um, well this one doesn't have any on it. One of them has a whole lot of silicone mashed around it, so I'm going to have to clean that off. And then usually it's a good idea to put another bit of silicone on there, and then take your new cork gasket and slap it on there and squish it into it so that way that silicone sticks to it and what that does is it makes the entire cover and gasket come off as one piece and then what you do is every time you adjust your valves or whatever you can actually reuse that gasket until it wears out and then on the opposite side this side the face that touches the head you actually take bearing grease and you gush it along here and I thought that was the weirdest thing when I read that in one of the service manuals like why in the hell would you do that and the reason is, is because that's what makes a good seal once you put that axle grease on here and you push this thing back onto the head that will stop that oil from escaping I had never heard of that before but I read it in the instruction manual and I was having nothing but leaking issues on the type 3 but once I did that the problem was resolved so we're gonna do just the same right here but I think we're gonna be wrapping up because it's starting to get a little late everything is soaking wet including me my clothes are soaked through and not so much from sweat but from condensation I'm just miserable this is just awful so I'm gonna ask you guys to please like comment subscribe please pluck that little dingle belly you see down there next to the subscribe button that way you get updates every time I upload a new video don't forget to check out Duckman Cycles VW Garage up on the Facebook group page if you'd like to email me duckmancycles at duckshit.net don't forget to check out down in the video description there'll be a whole bunch of links and other descriptions to what's been going on in this video so I hope that helps you guys and uh, like I said we're gonna come back to this one hopefully tomorrow I think it's supposed to rain again tomorrow I think it's supposed to rain again Thursday so I I think it's going to rain for another two days, which is absolutely miserable, but I'll be back when I can. I absolutely promise you guys. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm going to put the spark plugs back in. I'm going to close up the valve covers so that way we keep the dirt out, and uh, we'll be back later. Thanks again. We'll see you next time.